Hi guys and welcome. Welcome to Junk Journal July 2024. So this is hosted by Meg Journals. So Meg does both January and July junk journaling. And we've been given 31 prompts being 31 days of July to work from. Today we're working on prompt number nine, which is scraps. So that really leaves it open to interpretation on scraps. Uh, as paper crafters, we all have scraps and we've usually got a heap of them. So I've turned to my container, um, I'll bring it over, this one here. So, you know, when I get a lot of scraps, like, you know, something like that, I'll sit down and pull some stamps out and, and I'll, you know, just have a, a lovely time just stamping away. So this one's a bit of book page. I've stamped the number five on it. You know, my strips here, I've used background, uh, sorry, background stamping on those, some different colors, a little B stamp. I've done sort of like a border on them. You know, we've got some um, texture stamps. We've got rulers. Uh, this one's off a background um, ruler stamp and I've uh, just cut those out. We've got long ones like that because I always have a lot of these strips. You know, we just sit down and we do that one. We've done some um, collage stamping. You know, just have a little bit of fun with it. So I'm, you know, when we've got our stamps out, I'll grab the the scraps and you know just do some stamping in different colors and it's a great way to just go to because we've already got all the stamping done uh, you, we can rummage through here this is um, piano paper I haven't stamped on it yet I, I, I thought I'd leave it like that and I'll, I would distress it so yeah lots and lots of fun uh, this is some leftover stamps I've used as well um, the off cuts I've just kept in there that one I've put that down there but I've purposely left the scrap because we don't I may want to put a cluster on it you know lots of different reasons for it um, I've cut some of these up or they're left over from a project but yeah we're gonna have a play with them today guys and then we've also got scraps that look like this as well you know it's um pieces that we want to keep, punch stuff out, some collaging papers, you know I've got lots and lots of bins like this, actually I like that piece, I might keep that one, um, that you know we can play with and we can, you know that one is left over from I was making faux stamps, uh, this one I was making faux buttons, um, yeah so always keep your scraps, you just never know when they're going to come in handy. So I'll put that one off to the side. Right, so what are we going to do? Um, I've collaged already uh, the background. I sort of went through and did a few pages just as a bit of a blank canvas. The Some of the pages I used for my journal are quite dark in the photos. Uh, it was a sporting journal, uh, sorry, a sporting book, uh, quite a large one, which I like the, the size of the papers, but um, don't didn't necessarily like the print that was on it but I knew I was going to do, be doing a lot of collaging in that anyway. Now I want to sort of add add a little bit of colour to the background of this before we do anything. I'm going to get a stamp block out and I'm also going to get some distress ink pads out. Just uh, not sure about colouring yet. I might go with the bundled sage just get a little bit of green on there. I'm just going to put it on the stamp block and then I'm going to just spritz it with some water just to get like a bit of a mottly mottly look and some color on on the back not too much now I want to put a bit of brown on there but I'm going to dry each layer so I've got my heat gun here it shouldn't take long because we're not using a lot of water on this and if we don't dry in between our colours, you're going to get a mud look. Like they will just blend together and it sometimes it can work out, other times not necessarily. Now these are Distress Oxide inks, so you'll see a little bit of oxidisation happening there. Okay. 
Okay, and I'm going to do a little bit more with the... So I love that. So the page obviously is curling a bit because we've used... We've got some layers there with the thickness of the glues. Uh, vintage photo might be... Another one I'll go with. We can spritz that with water and, you know, make it run and that. I'm not going to do that. It's, it'll add too much water to the page. And we just want a little bit of grunginess on the back there. And I'm going to be doing a little bit of distressing with my ink around the edges as well. Lovely. Now do we need one more? Grab some paper towel. Clean the stamp block off for the next colour. Maybe an iced spruce. Haven't used that one in quite a while. It's got like a it's like a sagey sagey green color it might be too much too much water I'll just take a bit off so it just adds adds a little bit I'll try twisting it Twisted it so it's it's gone on fairly um, a dry and maybe just a little bit more brown. So I'm going to go with walnut stain because we're going to be distressing. Dressing around the edge. So I like the twisting effect. That I'm getting. Love that. I'll just give the heat gun a blast over it. So by adding a little bit of ink like this, you can see I didn't have to use gesso to blend in the edges of my collaging. So the ink sort of draws the eye away from it. Yes, we've got a bit of an edge there, but it just, just looks like it's the grunge. Just going to flatten out the page again. Beautiful. Now I'm going to run the Distress ink around the edge and I'm doing that with Walnut Stain. Some of your edges lift up like this one here just grab your glue stick again very easy to fix a 
Lovely. I love those bits of green coming through. Okay, and now we sort of want to have a look at, I'm going to use some of these strips. That I've got um, stamped out that I was showing you before. Because I'm thinking that. I might just do just a feature page. So to me, if I do something over here, we can still journal on there. So maybe just a, a cluster of some kind. And you'll get some ideas of so that one I've just stamped so it's coffee dyed paper and I've just stamped a frame stamp on that rather than that one we might go with that same here there is I do have a video guys um, of doing all of this so that's just repeating a stamp and then cutting it out That one too. That's a bit of, um, I've used a border stamp on that one. Oh, sorry, border punch. So you can see all this beautiful textured stuff I've got to play with. Actually, I like that. It might be the wrong green. might be the wrong green but I'm holding it out that's just re repetitive number so I'm just pulling out some pieces that I think I might want to use so you can see that I haven't even trimmed the edges I just stamped multiple times on a bit of um, it actually looks like book page so we've got the start you know those plain strips you've got down on your book page so there's the start of the book page print on there so definitely don't throw anything out when you got your stamps out and you've got scraps on your desk then stamp away so that one I've stamped bingo on, it's a bit of book page. Great for collaging as well. That one's the same bit of book page edge and I've um, stamped script stamp on it. That's a wider piece, we might go with that. All right, so now we've got some pieces out there. I want to um, be also thinking of a focal as well. A focal piece in the sense of a plant, a um, butterfly, you know, something along those lines. And I'm just tearing off, I want sort of something plain in the background as well so we're going to be building building like a, a cluster maybe some of that green paper that i had before so at the moment we're just yeah gra gathering our scraps Now I've torn that towards me so you see you get that white edge because I want to ink it. I'm going to leave 
that ink open there at the moment and I'm going to try and just do a little bit of layering to decide what pieces I want to keep and what, what I don't. tell this is on coffee dyed paper because I shall tear that away um, it's it's like parchment I just love coffee dyed paper you can it gives a little bit more body than your original piece of paper and I do mine in the oven so I'll soak a pile of it I'll put the whole pile in the oven and then as it as it dries they just come to the surface So I'm sort of layering down there at the moment. And some of it may stay, some of it may not just to give you a bit of an idea of you know what you can do with scraps and have the beauty of having modified scraps like this so I'm really liking how that's all coming together how I'm gonna um, stick it down once I decide I really don't know you might just have that across the bottom maybe <clears throat> And we won't really know until we decide what um, what focal piece we're going to put on there. So I'm thinking, I'm just going to grab my box of tricks. Okay, so we've got so I've got some stamped images. I've got some cutout images. Something in the way of leaves. And then I've got these, um, I've got a video to this, which is your fodder video. So fodder is food for your journal. And it's how easy they are to draw. And I just want to add a little bit of, um, and these can be done on your scrap pieces of cardstock as well. So you might, um, I like that. Okay, so let's go with that. So now the challenge is to stick everything down and I'm not going to ink the edges because we've got such a grungy background um, but I will move 
move that off to the side there. Just going to tear that end off. So we know we want that one stuck down there. So I hope this has given you some ideas, guys, and some inspiration on how to use your scraps a different way. Um, like I said, just pull out your pile of scraps, get your stamps out, stamp different, and just randomly stamp. You don't have to be too particular with it. And then this is just like, I guess you could call it strip clustering. So you're layering strips down to give you like a layered, layered effect. And then some people will pick that up and hold it like that. I actually want that's showing a little bit more and run a staple through it your staples will get covered up lovely so I might use a bit of art glitter for this one. You can glue under, give it a little bit more adhesion than the staples, totally up to you. Some people just staple this straight onto their page. I actually like to glue it. I'm going to cut this off in a straight line because we're doing the border down the bottom and I'll just re-ink the edge because I had distressed that I must have been using it or maybe I distressed it in the video but I, either that or I was using it for a um, a project and then decided not to use it or I'd cut a piece off it. And I'm going to take it out from the where the page folds to. Keep these. These are great for you know clusters where you just want to you know add add pieces like that to it some numbers some labels you know pop a pop a color on top and then put a flower or a butterfly on it just simple if i keep a drawer beside me and um, i'll just pull a few out to show you I've got all my scraps and off cuts there so when I've got my stamps out because you've already got them out I'll grab a few of them and I'll stamp on it and then you get all this you know great ephemera or fodder or you know whatever you want to call it um, for your journals absolutely awesome don't know whether to add another strip there I think it might be too much Yep, I'm going to leave it fairly plain. And that one I'm going to pop down first. And then that one over the top. And then we might put a label down the bottom. Just to finish it off. And I think I'll put a blank label. That we can, um, you know, add a word or something to it later. Or whoever 
whoever buys this journal or ends up with this journal they can um, you know add a little bit of themselves to it So this page is very much a combination of, you know, journaling, using your scraps. There's a little bit of art journaling in there. To me, they all... To me, every page you do, no matter what you um, normally do or concentrate on, Doing, whether you're a journaler, a junk journaler, art journal, to me, every page you creates a bit of an art or it's an art piece that, you know, you want to, um, don't necessarily have to put a, um, a label on, on it. I'm going to grab some labels um, that are also, you will see a video, um, I'm yet to post this one of using your scraps that one's got a green green background not sure that one's got a red but i don't want to don't want to add any more although i do like that one don't really want to add any more numbers So I'm just looking for a plain, one of my plain ones. I may have, may have used, used them up, so you could put ticket. Don't really want to add red. Don't want to add a number. I like the green, but it's a, to, to me it's a little bit too different to that one. So let me have another look. And you know what? We could we could even go this way. This one that I've I've got out down the bottom. We could have that one across there where you could stamp stamp a word across the bottom um, just to be sure i'm just going to have a little bit more of a browse i thought i had had some still on my desk I'll see what else I've got in my let me have a rummage through here because I did have some more stamped frames that may necessarily not be in the white or I could I could grunge it up a little bit keep those out While I'm rummaging, obviously you're yeah, getting some ideas. Maybe a number. Let me go to my label folder. Which I have dropped it. I need to go through and I 
I need to go through and um, fix it up because I I did drop it. Maybe plain one if I can get a different colour. I may have used most of them up. Just want a black frame might work. Big decisions. I don't normally take this long to decide on a label as you if you watch my videos I normally just lay it down and um, don't procrastinate too much over it I think because I had in my head that I wanted to leave something plain there so we can go that one um, or we can go that one probably a little bit small we've got that one which i do like so i'm going to go with that one and it's already distressed or we could go so i really like that one so i'm going to go with that one No, leave it alone, leave it simple. circle one so it grabbed my eye when I was going through and I've just used a circle stamp on that and then a circle punch which is another way to use up your scraps so grab your punches out as well So there we go guys great way to use your scraps i hope you've got some inspiration out of today's videos but definitely um if you like my stamping idea on your scraps um you know collaging so that one i've done two rows you can tear it up use it for borders but that's my take on today's prompt number nine which is scraps and i really hope you've enjoyed that and got some inspiration out of it thanks guys and i look forward to seeing you on day 10 um the prompt for day 10 is thread thanks guys and i'll see you on the next video bye